depending on your time zone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I would like to welcome everyone to the webinar of Transform Static Architecture into Dynamic Data Center in just a few clicks. This webinar is presented by AIC and Liquid. My name is Rich Chen from AIC, and I will be your moderator today. Before we start in the classroom, let me provide a quick overview of the webinar's format and some quick start tips. The webinar is broken down into two presentations, AIC and Liquid. If you would like to ask questions, please type them into the question box and they will be answered during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. For additional discussion with any of the presenters, there will be two separate room rooms open up at the end of the webinar that will allow you to dig deeper into any of technology discussion. Lastly, all of the presentation will be available for download from the Hangout session of GoToWebinar and will be posted to AICIPC.com for future reference. Today, we will have two high-power presenters. First, we will have Federico Papiani, Product Manager from AIC, presenting AIC's next generation JBox and JBox solution. Then, we will have Director of Product and Technology Marketing from Liquid, George Wagner, to present the composable infrastructure in the data center today. Hi, my name is Federico Papayani. I'm one of the product managers here at AIC. I spent the last 10 years studying storage system and more recently, uh, a lot of study about software-defined workloads. The scope of this portion of the webinar is to introduce a new product to LC portfolio, the J5010, and remind the audience of a product we introduced a couple of years ago, the J2024-04. Both systems fit perfectly in the composable infrastructure, but they can be used in a variety of other applications. The J5010, or how we call it here internally at ASE, JBox, is a PCIe extension chassis based on the Broadcom PCIe Gen 4 switch, the Atlas. Other design characteristics of the JBox are the sharp depth and the flexible design. I will go over in more detail in later in the presentation. Why do we call it JBox? Everything has to do with the flexible design. The system can be configured as uh, just a bunch of GPUs or FPGA cards, and uh, even smart network cards or flash storage. The JBox is 5U high with two flexible and hot swappable nodes. Right under the nodes, there are four CRPS power module. They can work in a two plus two or three plus one configuration. There is also an J45 port connected to the BMC for the enclosure management. In this slide, we can see the two removable nodes in more detail, and the canister also including auxiliary power connector for adding cards. Uh, of course, cards that require like a GPUs or FPGAs. The central pictures shows the detail of the board where the switch resides, and the connector that we use to allow a swappability. On the other side, we can see the 620 millimeter fan adjusted in two rows for performance and redundancy. The four low profile slots in the middle are used for connectivity. In the diagram show here, uh, you can see the direct connectivity to a server. Up to 64 PCIe Gen 4 lanes can be used for upstream to one or more host server. The slots can also be used for smart network cards. A big part of the flexibility are the nodes and the configuration. At the moment, we have two possible configurations for adding cards, either eight 16 lane slot or 16 times eight lanes. We are also developing a new back plan for UDA2 and VME drives that will allow up to 64 devices per chassis. The unit two are connected by two lanes, PCI Gen 4, so we think it's sufficient performance for those. A combination of the different options is also uh, gonna be available. Any application that requires a large amount of GPU can take advantage of the JBox. Application like medical, that require GPU and large amount of fast storage can take advantage of the GPU plus the upcoming storage solution. 
Similar to GPU, any application that requires identity of FPGA can take advantage of the JBox. The shop depth can make a deal companion for edge complication and a perfect fit for telco and mobile racks. Now let's talk about the J2024-04, JBuff for short here at the ASE. This system was introduced a few years ago, however, it's getting a lot of attention due to its uh, capability. This system is specialized for storage, however, how the U.2 NVMe drive are shared with the host is customizable. I will show some of the options a later slide. Let's take a look at the JBuff hardware and feature. The system is designed for low latency and high performance. At the front, uh, the system has 24 drive tray for U.2 NVMe. Each drive can be powered on and off individually via GUI or IPMI command. In the back, there is room for up to four um, retimer cards or smart network cards for NVMe of a fabric application. Drives, nodes, and power module are all hot swappable for easy maintenance. Each node is also equipped with a BMC for enclosure management and redundancy. The first configuration is via retimer cards. This is the easier way to add NVMe storage to an existing server. It can also be used as a shared storage for clustering. The 24 drive, if used as a dual ported U.2, are available on both nodes. Active active or active passive is dictated by the host server. Using a smart network card with SOC like the Broadcom, Stingray, or the Mellanox Bluefield, it's possible to share NVMe namespaces over the network. To man the remote NVMe volume, open source or custom software can be used. The J2024-04 can be equipped with up to four uh, Broadcom Stingray or two Mellanox Bluefield with the additional 16 lanes auxiliary extension. NVMe of a fabric is a vast topic and it goes uh, it's too large to be covered in this webinar. Uh, feel free to reach out uh, offline to discuss your specific application. This concludes my presentation. I'll be answering some questions uh, in the Q&A session. Thank you for attending. Hello everyone, my name is George Wagner. I'm the Director of Product and Technical Marketing here at Liquid. And on behalf of Liquid, I wanna thank AIC for having us on this webinar today to walk you through uh, what composable infrastructure is, uh, how Liquid does it, and really how AIC and Liquid work together to deliver uh, these new types of uh, dynamic data center solutions. So I think to really set the stage for our conversation today, uh, it's important for us to take a look at kind of how, uh, how IT is dealing with the with cloud and, and on-prem and, and that dichotomy. Uh, you know, as we know, most most customers, including yourselves, are, are probably have some amount of data in the cloud. Um, uh, it definitely provides a great level of flexibility and agility. However, there's a cost involved, right? And uh, sometimes we may under provision what we need uh, in the public cloud, uh, only to have to add more resources. And as you add more resources, costs begin to skyrocket. Uh, and there's also uh, workloads you'd like to have on-prem for security purposes. Uh, so, you know, in our estimation, uh, on-prem data centers are going to be around uh, for some time to come. Uh, so, what's you know what, what's one of the main reasons why uh, folks are moving from the data center to the cloud? Uh, and most of it has to be uh, has to do with uh, the limitations of their on-prem infrastructure. And uh, what I mean by that is the server itself. So the server is the computing unit uh, of, of the data center. And uh, I'm a former IT guy. I was doing IT back in the 90s and, and early 2000s. And back then, you know, we'd, 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 when we had a new workload we wanted to deploy, we would, we'd have to go talk to the vendor or to the server uh, deploy the server that would take you know four to six weeks. Uh, I'd also uh, plan in because it's about a three to five year uh, 
life cycle, I would I would probably tend to over provision some of those resources. So I buy extra in case I need to grow into it. Although I may never use those, and the the resources that I don't use uh, end up being trapped inside of those servers and unavailable to be uh, utilized by other servers. And then when I want to scale, uh, I am I'm really limited to. Uh, the form factor of the server itself, right? How many I.O. devices, how many accelerators, uh, storage devices can I put into a server? So, uh, you know, it can be difficult to scale as well. And that's the way it was when I was a kid, and that's really the way it is now. And although there have been many software advancements uh, that have, have, have come our way in the last 20 years to make it a lot easier uh, to manage, deploy, scale, uh, like virtualization, excellent utilization, right? Resource utilization and in uh, HCI, for example, at the end of the day, it those, those that software is still consuming this rigid hardware uh, under the cover. So that's really was limiting possibilities. So what I'm going to introduce you to is a new concept where uh, the server is no longer the computing unit of the data center, but rather the the data center itself becomes the computing unit. And that's with the technology called composable infrastructure. Uh, and we call it unlocking uh, the dynamic data center. And so what Liquid does uh, is very simple. It's not like having to learn uh, a newfangled technology that has all of these different uh, you know, twists and turns to it. It's very simple. All right? uh, what we do is we start by disaggregating those critical resources, like NVMe flash, storage class memory, GPUs, uh, even the servers themselves, and we place them into pools, into resource pools of compute, GPU, you know, SSD. Among, it could be really any resource as long as it's PCIe connected. And, and for the most part, those are storage devices, uh, storage class memory like Optane um, and, uh, and, uh, and Nix even. Uh, and we put them into pools. We put them into chassis, if you will. Uh, AIC is, is one of our main partners here, and I'll, we'll look at that here in a little bit. We'll be disaggregating those across the data center, and then we reconnect them. We connect them together uh, into, uh, into PCIe fabric, uh, in essence, extending the PCIe bus outside of the server and across the data center. So PCIe fabric is one way, Gen 3 and, and Gen 4, so extremely low latency. Uh, we're talking... Uh, 150 nanoseconds to 100 nanoseconds for uh, Gen 4, Gen 3, and Gen 4, respectively. Uh, and we can also connect through Ethernet, InfiniBand. Uh, so uh, you know you can you can do uh, over fabrics as well. But you know these new technologies uh, around networking and fabrics, high speed, high throughput, has really an, uh, allowed uh, companies like Liquid to uh, take it and broaden uh, the. The, the motherboard, if you will, and stretch it across the data center. Uh, and what makes us unique is our uh, is our operating environment. So we have what's called our Liquid uh, OS, that the software that runs across and really connects and allows our customers to compose bare metal servers uh, to really meet any application requirement. So you know, as I talked about a few minutes ago, when we we look at composing, or not composing, but actually acquiring servers today, you're looking at a crystal ball and you're guessing at uh, what resources you need for a server, for an application, for, you know, for the workload itself, and you're hoping that you're going to get it right when, in fact, uh, you, you may not. Well, with this, uh, I can look at the workload requirements for, for a particular application, and I go into the software, into Liquid Software, and I can compose bare metal servers directly from our UI, API, or CLI in seconds. Uh, and these are bare metal servers, except for when you look at them physically, they're disaggregated across the network, across the, uh, across the data center. And I can give workloads exactly the resources they need today, and it can be anything from you know one use servers, we even plug into some blades, uh, and allow them to not only create new servers, but we can we can uh, work with customers who are looking to uh, get more out of their existing investments. So by, by taking an existing server and adding GPU to an existing server that may not have the, the PCIe slots uh, to accommodate additional GPU or additional uh, uh, storage. So you know, if you wanted to add 16 GPU 
to a single server, done. Uh, if I want to add uh, you know, 20 uh, NVMe devices to a server, done. And you get that flexibility like you would from a NAS or a SAN uh, divide, uh, array, except for you get, uh, you get better performance because it's just like direct connect. And as far as the server is concerned, it is. Uh, it, from the BIOS perspective, it sees all these devices connected right to it. And when I need to change, I, want, I need to scale, right? So it's say that a workload then says, okay, I, after a year, I, I realize that I need more resources or less resources. The software itself allows me to scale up or scale down in real time. So really reducing those touch points in the data center. Uh, I remember cutting my hands when, when I was uh, younger in the data center, just you know, cracking open servers and replacing hardware. You don't have to do that anymore. Uh, our software allows you to, in the case of workload one, I could remove GPU, I can add them to workload three. Um, I can add more NVMe, GPU, whatever I want to do, and I can do that all via software uh, and do it in seconds instead of having to schedule downtime. Um, you know, often, I'm often asked, okay, can you add resources? Can you hot add resources? And the answer is yes. Uh, so let's say you've got a Linux operating system and you wanted to add more GPU, you can easily add GPU into that through our software with the uh, host OS live. Uh, and then what happens when an application is no longer needed? Well, I can spin that back down. Uh, I can take workload three, I can bring those resources back into the resource pool and spin up the next workload and compose, once again, the resources that that workload needs, that application needs. No more, no less. And it really allows you to, to maximize resource utilization, minimize overbuying, get that cloud-like agility and flexibility on-prem. Uh, and we even have service providers that are looking to do this as well because it allows them to save time and save money uh, in, in their operations as well. Uh, and we do, we do uh, honor uh, multi-tenancy as well. So if, there, if you do have an environment where you have multiple people that need to, that need groups that need their own hardware, that need to assemble their own systems, you can easily do that uh, with what we're doing. So when we normally talk to customers, the, the question isn't you know, whether or not I want to go with composability, it's you know, what's the difference between what I'm doing, what, you know, the cloud and, and what I can do on-prem. And so when we look at this example, uh, you know, public cloud, uh, Amazon in particular, uh, you know, we look at these, these two configurations and we compare them to what you're able to do with your own hardware on-prem and you get, you know, this is a one year savings, but you get quite a bit of savings. Uh, you're not under provisioning, there's no surprises, it's all your hardware, so when you need to scale, you're not paying to scale, you have those resources. If you need resources, you buy what you need, and when you no longer need them, you put them back into the pool and use them elsewhere. It's extremely flexible. And when we talk to customers about how they want to use this, uh, I'm going to go through a couple of use cases here, a few use cases I should say, that, um, that we're seeing quite a bit of. Uh, one of them is what we call dynamic bare metal cloud as a service. Uh, and we have a customer uh, who is a ride-sharing service in California, and they came to us with a challenge. It was that they are a 24-hour operation, uh, they have applications that they're spinning up all the time, and the trouble they were having is when, an when it's time for an application for a workload to be spun up, uh, the servers they had were kind of a mismatch. They had workloads that needed one GPU, but all they had were boxes with three. Uh, and, it was, and, they, and when they did that, those were tied up. The resources were tied up when they were with that server. So what we, what we went to them and said, okay, let's, let's size out what you need. We came up with three sizes, like t-shirt sizes, small, medium, and large. Uh, and, then we, and then we put those configurations into our software uh, as templates, if you will. And when it was time to spin up these workloads, we simply assign them to the templates and uh, we get uh, precise sizing, uh, you know, right sizing, if you will, of this environment. So whenever they want to spin up a, a small server, they can spin it and match it up with a small configuration and so forth. So it really allows them to maximize resource utilization. Uh, another one, this one I love and really attracted me to the company when I, when I was first interviewing was this notion of uh, time splitting. So let's say in this example, I have a, this is a real customer again, this, these customers do uh, video rendering, they're an entertainment company. They had uh, AI engineers that were working throughout the day and they required GPU. Uh, they needed four GPU in total, uh, and uh, they, they worked all day, but they also had a, a nighttime workload, which was video rendering. And it, they, were, they ran at different hours, 
and they came to us and said, okay, what, we don't want to have to go out and buy a GPU. What can you do for us? And so we, we, we outfitted them with an enclosure um, and four GPU. And they uh, provisioned those out to the AI engineers during the day. And then as soon as they left, uh, those GPU were then provisioned to the nighttime workload, which was video rendering. So it really allowed them to maximize resource utilization. Uh, and in effect, uh, you know, doubled their utilization, right? They weren't, they weren't using those. I think they were using them in AI only. And they just took those, put those in an enclosure, uh, connected these servers to the fabric and began to provision. So uh, maximizing resource utilization, that could be done uh, with these types of workloads. It could be with VDI during the day and then number crunching at night is really up to you. The third one I want to talk to you about is uh, dynamic resource uh, application for AI acceleration. So AI is a very interesting workload, right? It's not an application, it's not an instance, it's a workflow. Uh, and there are several uh, stages of this workflow, ingest, cleaning and data tagging, uh, training and inference. And uh, for each one of those, they each require very separate uh, and distinct configurations. And those can be configured uh, through our software, right? Composable, uh, very easily. Uh, but the challenge a lot of customers have is that moving, you know, petabytes of data between these servers is where the bottleneck is injected uh, into this process. And when you're talking about, you know, a lot of AI workloads, we're talking about research about saving lives uh, and defense and other things where, you know, we don't have time to wait for data to move. What we're able to do with composability, uh, liquid composability, is uh, take and compose the servers around the data, right? These are stateless devices we're talking about here. So uh, GPU, for example, um, and, uh, you know, and networking, we can compose all that around the data pool itself. Uh, and the data never moves. We just compose the, the servers uh, from each stage around that data and we're good to go. We cut down uh, on the time it takes to get answers, those critical answers. Uh, and everyone's happy. So how we how do we put it together? Uh, we we put it together very simply. So the the software is really where the magic happens, but the hardware is what enables it. And so we do have some of our own hardware. Uh, you can see that PCIe fabric switch on the left side of the screen. Uh, we also have uh, we partner uh, with AIC in some instances, uh, in many instances I should say, uh, for. Uh, expansion chassis, and in fact, we, we partner with them for compute nodes as well. Uh, so we have those, you see those uh, cards at the top of the screen? Those are uh, host, uh, host bus adapters, PCIe. They could also be Ethernet adapters, but these ones, in fact, are PCIe. They plug into the servers. This is a, uh, a, a 1U two-node server from AIC, compute node. Uh, and so you plug those in, and they go into our PCIe switch, which we manufacture. At the bottom there, we have JBOFs, JBON, JBOGs, and I'll show those to you on the next screen. Um, and we source those all through AIC, uh, and it's a great partnership. I mean, we've 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 relied on them uh, for some time now, and they've been delivering uh, you know a high quality that you all expect, uh, and it really enabled us to do uh, to provide composability in many many areas. So if you look at what we have here on the right side of the screen, uh, we have uh, just box of flash, so JBOF, so a box of flash, 24 uh, NVMe drives, uh, could be 24 Octane cards if you wanted to put Octane in there and do composable memory uh, to augment uh, your DRAM uh, because DRAM is very expensive. Why not use uh, Intel Octane memory and compose you know terabytes of that to augment the uh, the DRAM? It's perfect. Uh, the JBON, so the JBON is running the same chassis, so that the J2, the J202402, uh, same box, but we're using OCP NICs. Uh, so let's say that you, uh, we have customers who need to do, need to have network changes, but don't want to go to the networking person to deal with it because they have to get into the queue. So if they compose networking, they simply compose those NICs to a new server. They don't have to bother the network people. They can move it around to different VLANs, different networks. Uh, the J box in the bottom left, uh, is a is a, uh, is a is a high capacity box uh, of uh, can hold GPU. It can hold uh, NVMe add-in cards, uh, Optane add-in cards, uh, networking, etc. Uh, it holds ten devices. Uh, this is a five U box, and then 
uh, compute nodes. So the uh, HP 201AG uh, with AMD Epic is actually a 2U uh, four node server. So ultra dense, uh, very popular with HPC customers uh, who are very interested in it because of the high density. Uh, you can put quite a bit of compute and memory in those and then be able to uh, plug it into the fabric and compose away. So uh, these are, you know, the, these, these systems, like I mentioned, are, are uh, you know, systems we're using today that we're deploying with in partnership with AIC. We do have multi-fabric support as well, uh, as I mentioned. So uh, you can use, you can get reap the benefits of PCIe or uh, NVMe over fabrics. You can do both at the same time. We see customers do that as well. Uh, from an operating environment standpoint, I'm often asked, you know, what are you doing from an OS standpoint? Well, at the, at the end of the day, uh, you're just composing a bare metal server. So really, any any software can run on it. You can run uh, Red Hat. You can run, you know, any any Linux flavor on there. Windows, uh, uh, ESX, uh, you know, Docker. You can run containers on there. So let's take a look at kind of the value of what we're delivering in composable infrastructure. Um, you know, for me, it's really when I talk to customers, it really resonates these three uh, pillars. You know, increasing flexibility, so being able to create any server configuration uh, to meet any workload requirement anytime. Uh, you know, it's vendor and fabric agnostic, so as far as the devices you put in, uh, it's really up to you, right? Different NVIDIA cards, you can run, we're heterogeneous, so from a compute standpoint, you can run AMD, Intel, uh, we've qualified ARM as well. Uh, any OS, and from an agility standpoint, you're really reducing. You know, not only is it uh, great from a from a resource utilization standpoint, but uh, for an operations from an operations standpoint, it's also extremely efficient. Uh, deployment times are reduced. You don't have to crack open servers uh, to scale. You can scale up or down, zero touch. In uh, management, is very flexible with our uh, API. Everything's API driven. Even our UI makes API calls, and we also have a CLI. Uh, and then redu reduction in cost because you're not over provisioning, you're buying only what's needed uh, and, and you're able to maximize resource utilization by using the software. So uh, those are just some of the areas. But, you know, I, I want to encourage you to, you know, reach out if you do have any questions. You know, we're, we're on right now answering them. So definitely ask away uh, and uh, look forward to, uh, to, to getting to them. And once again, I want to thank AIC for allowing us to, uh, to join you today and, and give you more information on composable infrastructure, and, and we definitely look forward to having a conversation. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, George and uh, Rick, for a great presentation. We are now open for Q&A session now. Please type in your question. We will read out the question for you. Federico, uh, can you share with us why should we use a uh, JBox? Uh, J5010 instead of a multi GPU standalone server. All right. Um, so there are multiple uh, way to use uh, both. Um, generally, GPU server are extremely large, um, and uh, they cannot fit really any kind of rack or environment. Uh, utilizing a J box uh, allow us to not only add uh, some uh, GPU or uh, cards to a smaller footprint server, uh, also reduce the total length of the general server. Um, some applications, like for example, at the edge, or where the server can be, you know, uh, changing pretty quickly. Um, so it allow us to move pretty fast on those, and um, of course. The other part is maintenance. Uh, we don't need to shut down completely the server, the compute, uh, for uh, for us to replace any of the components internally. Uh, they might be storage or uh, uh, or cards. With the removable nodes, they actually make a, a maintenance a little easier. Okay, uh, Federico, uh, can you also share with us? Can I use a J box J? 2024 uh, 04 as a NVMe of a target now. Um, so, um, NVMe of Fabric, yes, it can be done. Um, there are a couple of uh, solutions that we have with uh, um, uh, the card, the Smart Nick manufacturer. Um, one of those, of course, is uh, uh, Broadcom uh, Stingray. 
uh, or the Melanox, or should I call it Melanox or NVIDIA, um, Bluefield. Um, so with this lot in the back, you can add uh, those Mark Nick and uh, you know they can be configured to offer NVMe over fabric. So they can be a target over fabric. Okay. Uh, one more question for you, Federico, because uh, it seems like we have a connection issue with uh, Liquid, so we will wait all the questions for Liquid uh, on the breakout room session. So one more question for you, Federico. Can uh, can you let us know if we can connect the JBox 5010 to multiple hosts? Uh, the answer is yes, uh, short answer. Of course, uh, um, there are multiple lanes and the switch can be configured in uh, in multiple ways, the PCI switch I'm talking about. So um, standard off the shelf, the unit can connect to up to two server, uh, but with uh, some slight configuration, um, it can be uh, up, to, uh, up to 16 server total. Um, eight, if you want to use the full amount of cards across. Okay, thank you, Federico. And due to the technical issue, uh, Liquid's team was dropped off, but they are waiting in the breakout session room right now already. So immediately followed by this uh, webinar, we will have two Zoom meeting rooms open up for our post-webinar happy hour event. One is hosted by AIC and another room hosted by Liquid team. There are three different ways you can join into the happy hour room room. All attendees should have received an email notification on February 1st with login access link information. Simply click the link to join the room meeting. Or you can download the information from the hangout session of this webinar. It will provide Zoom access information as well. Or uh, simply click on the link provided in the chat box. Uh, it will bring you into the uh, AIC or Liquid's uh, Zoom discussion room. Please rate this event. We value your feedback. We will post the presentation at www.aicipc.com. Follow us on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. In February, we will still have one more webinar on February 24. Maximize performance and minimize rack space and TCO. Please register if you have not done so yet. Thank you.